I spoke to five guys um, in the afternoon, all, all guys trading at least at least 17 to 25 years. They said they wouldn't touch this thing. They wouldn't. They, they wouldn't touch this thing because again, this is this is this is the widow maker. This is this is going to break up more marriages uh, than Bernie Mail, right? This is this is death. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process and own your future. Hey guys, uh, good morning everybody and uh, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, first and foremost, for all you guys who just watch our broadcast, especially on the weekends, uh, I want to wel uh, welcome you aboard, number one, but I want to uh, definitely wish you and your families uh, health and happiness and lots of love Again, this holiday season, we are, what, five days away, four days away from uh, Christmas, uh, the best part of the year, at least for me. It's all about the kids. It doesn't make a difference what I get or I can, you know, it's all about the kids. And for all you guys, especially for parents, you really appreciate how the look of your children's faces come uh, Christmas morning, how old they are. It doesn't make a difference. They could be one years old. They could be uh, 30 years old. It's, it's just all about... Uh, the family unit, the love that we've tried to create year 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 after year, and hopefully everybody's around uh, for a very uh, long time. So uh, let's talk about the market. So if you're a trader, okay, you can meet a young trader, right? A young trader in their 20s. You can meet an old trader, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old. But it's very rare that you come across a trader that was once young and now they're old. And there's a big reason why, okay? The greatest gift you can give yourself is starting out as a young trader and then being called old, right? Being called old in this business is phenomenal. That means, again, you've withstand the time. You withstand uh, everything that the market threw you, okay? Uh, your development, your years of self-doubt, self-pity, uh, all that stuff that every single trader goes through. We, we try to convey this message every single week because there's a lot of new traders uh, that started watching this uh, started watching this platform and again my message th consistent message throughout the years is again there's nothing that you're going through that nobody uh, before or after is going to go through as well it's just it's just the dynamic cycle of preparing for a trader and when you're a new trader you're trying to prove yourself uh, whether it's to yourself your peers unfortunately in this day and age because of social media to some random avatars that completely have no bearing on your life one way or another but you're young right i get it you're trying to prove yourself so you're trying to show everybody how smart you are and your, your level of trading is exciting you win big you lose big right it's very exaggerated because again it's all about the name it's all about uh your ability to be known i get that Right? We all have gone through that in the age of 23, 24, 25 years old. By the time you hit your 30s and hopefully your 40s into your trading uh, journey, you want to be left alone. You really do. Okay, You don't care. You, you really don't care about too many things. You don't care about opinions. You don't care about the noise. You don't care about anything. It's you versus the charts. It's you versus the market. It's your process versus somebody else. Again, we're not betting on stocks. I don't bet on stocks. I bet that my process is going to be more superior than the person on the other side of our trade. That's what we're betting on as we get older. And our trading, at least when you start hitting a certain age, once you're in 10, 15, 20 years plus in this business, it's boring, man. You want every day to be the same. It's boring. It's methodical. Okay. Uh, it's non-invasive it's 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 everything that everything that everything that everything that everything that everybody's trying to do that it's that it's only individual to you and the problem with the exciting trading okay the sexy trading the want to be known trading the one the, telling everybody how smart you are you can have a very loud and very sexy results both good and bad and you know as everybody knows i love tesla okay i don't think anybody on the planet loves the stock more than I. I, you know, I short the stock, I go long the stock. I love the stock. I love the company. The CEO of the company is one of a kind. 
What's not to like, right? There's a lot of people, there's a lot of hate, there's a lot of animosity on the other side of the equation. That's why the stock is so appealing, especially to uh, a lot of seasoned traders and a lot of new traders as well. And the point is here, you know, I traded Tesla pretty much every day going into uh, the rebalancing. Everybody knows the inclusion is because again, I don't want the circus. I don't want the noise. I don't want the algorithms dancing on my forehead. Okay, we, we don't want any of that. Uh, it's like picturing trading on a Fed day. Like I hate trading after two o'clock uh, on a Fed day because it's very unpredictable. One headline can really take you out of the trade, so I kind of stay away. The Tesla rebalancing on Friday was a Fed day times a thousand. Okay, and everything that I want in my day, boring, lethargic, predictable, was not Tesla. So we stayed away. I had, I had no interest in any of this stuff. And I logged off around 2.30, 2.45 on Friday because, again, I didn't want to sit, I, I didn't want to sit there watching what was going to happen at 3 o'clock because I knew, right? I, I kind of knew. Again, you, you, you watch the movie, the same movie over and over again. You know how it's going to end. And on, I tweeted out, if you go on my, uh, my regular Twitter, uh, Twitter account, I, I tweeted out in February of 1990, Mike Tyson fought uh, Buster Douglas in Japan. And all the retail money, all the retail money was saying he can't lose. He cannot lose. There is no way Mike Tyson is going to lose to Buster Douglas. All the retail money, all the gamblers are on, are on Mike Tyson. Yada, 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 Mike Tyson gets knocked out. And the moral of the story is when everybody, especially retail, is going one way, usually bad things are going to happen. And when you look at Tesla, what happened, uh, and again, I wasn't around to witness this, and I, I wasn't around to witness this on purpose. I just didn't want to, I didn't want this to kind of mentally, you know, hang on my brain. Even though I wasn't, I wasn't allocating any capital, I didn't have an opinion on this thing, but I knew something, you know something bad's going to happen because again, this is what the market is, and this is what the most aggressive stock on the planet uh, dictate that's going to happen. And from what I saw after, you know, after I logged back on, number one, there was a $50 pull on one sequence, right? $50 pull on one sequence and an $80 move back. And this is on one bar, and this was 71 million shares. Now, I don't know about the rest of you guys, right? When I'm trading Tesla... Two, three bucks the wrong way for me is pretty, pretty considerate. You know, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty good, pretty good hickey. I can't imagine, okay, what 50 points, a 50 point pull in a matter of minutes. I, I couldn't even, I, I would be slicing my own throat. So I don't get it. So the idea that you could stay in a trade like this, knowing that the ramifications could be deadly, a count tilt, and you, you want to do this for a living is mind-blowing to me. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me. And, and I just don't understand why you would put yourself in a situation that you can potentially go on tilt. Now, again, if you were a more experienced trader and you were shorting the rebalance or buying it in the hole, but again, you kind of know what you're doing because, again, there's a lot of people who trade rebalancing. They've been doing this for years. But if you're a brand-new trader and you're trading your first year, year and a half, two years, you really have to ask yourself a question of how, how much discipline, okay, how much do you really want to do this for a living? Because again, there are casinos all over the world, Las Vegas, Atlantic City, Pennsylvania, all over the place. There, there's, there's, you know, Monaco, there's millions of casinos around the world. This, ladies and gentlemen, again, if you are serious about being a trader, and you are really committed to kind of doing this on, on any level, whether it's part-time uh, semi part time, full time, whatever the case may be, this has to this has to be eliminated. Okay, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make it. There's there's absolutely no reason why you put yourself in a situation that one trade could put you on tilt. Okay, and I have to and I, and I have to assume because none of my friends. I spoke to five guys um, in the afternoon. All, all guys trading at least at least seventeen to twenty five years. They said they wouldn't touch this thing. They wouldn't. They, they wouldn't touch this thing because again, this is this is this is the widow maker. This is this is going to break up more marriages uh, than Bernie Madoff, right? This is this is death. And if you made money on this thing, just understand that you didn't do anything right. You didn't. It's just again, it's it's like betting. You know, you have a slate of football games coming on. You have two today. You have a whole bunch tomorrow. It's like betting the game and winning. That's all it is. 
So if, and, and again, you don't have to listen to my advice. Uh, you, you know, again, that's cool. That's great. Everybody has, everybody's adults. Everybody uh, has their own money on the line and you could do what you want. But, but again, it, it's much easier to listen to advice than the after fact of what happens if you don't. And again, it's just something that if you're considering to be in this business for any type of longer term duration, again, we don't want sexy. Okay. We don't want exciting. We don't want the hot stock. We don't want to be anything where retail is touching. Again, if you believe in the theory that retail loses 90, 95% of the time, again, why would you want to be in the same trade with them at the same time? It just doesn't make any sense. If you think about that statement, you really appreciate what I'm saying here. If you don't, that's cool. Again, we could, you know, we could always agree to disagree, but the moral of the story is if you again, if you want to stay in this business, do yourself a favor, find the process, and it could be anything. You know, it could be E-minis, small caps, mid caps, uh, trading pivots like I do on beta. You could trade whatever you want. Just make sure it's boring, okay? Make sure the, the whole recipe for your success is one step at a time, baby steps, longevity, okay? And keep it very simple that you can have control of the trade. This is not control. This is the opposite of control. So hopefully, uh, if you guys did well with this thing, congratulations. If you got caught in this thing, hopefully it will be a lesson that you can recover from. But the moral of the story is, again, your goal every single day is stay in business and make it to the next day. So uh, let's talk about quickly about the market. You know, markets, again, nothing materialistically has changes. Uh, you, can, you can make a you know, you can make how many, you know, how many theories about what's going on, you know, until you're blue in the face. We got about, what, two weeks left, 11 days left uh, in this year. Nothing is going to be decided. Uh, futures are very strong. You have the NASDAQ uh, up 3%. The Dow uh, is squeezed out a little bit of a gain. Uh, but, but again, the stock market is very, very strong. Um, small caps are going crazy. Random moves. Um, you have your SPACs going nuts. Your EVs going nuts. Obviously, uh, Tesla's all over the place. The one group, again, that's lagging uh, has been beta. You know, for every one big move that we see, right? You know, we have, for every one big move uh, that we see, it doesn't follow through. You know, Apple, again, had a chance to, to really, really get exaggerated. Didn't follow through. But again, they're still good, right? If you look at the macro view of these charts, they're still good. Netflix, again, looked great. It's, you know, sold off, held the five-day, and again, if you look at the macro, again, macro, big picture, they still look very, very good. But again, where the hell is the follow through? So maybe, maybe this year, or at least the year that's coming up, we finally get a more orderly market. Maybe, you know, you won't get your SPACs and maybe you won't get your little EV names or uh, any type of alternative energy names that are going absolutely nuts. But maybe the market comes back to embrace orderly trading right? The Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, the Facebooks and the Apples and all that good stuff. Although again, they've had great runs, but they haven't had great runs in the last two, three months. And the, the mantra of these names have been one good day, sell off for two weeks, one good day, sell off for two weeks, sideways, 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 rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. So again, this is my bread and butter. Um, although again, of course I'll trade everything else because again, this market has taught us that there is speculation money flow with some good liquidity that you could still take advantage. We'll get the, get to Friday's pivots in a second, but the bread and butter, are these pivots, right? The bread, excuse me, the bread and butter, are these beta names, and it would be nice just asking the market gods. It would be nice that we can get more than one day every two weeks on every individual stock. Just saying, it would be nice. But I, like I said in last week's video or maybe the previous week's video, I do believe just because the success of so many fund managers this year, uh, their last raising of capital for the year, they have to allocate their money somewhere, okay? And you're not gonna allocate your money. If you're, again, like if, you're, if you are a technology-based hedge fund, okay, or an index fund, again, you're not gonna allocate your money at least not here. You're not going to allocate your money to Tesla up here, right? You're going to allocate Apple, okay? Coming out of a, a you know, nice middle channel, you're going to probably allocate your money to Amazon. Again, Amazon hasn't done anything, okay? Look at Google, right? You're going to allocate your money somewhere. Again, it's not a runaway train. It's holding the bottom base, right? Facebook has done nothing. Look at this. NVIDIA, oh my God. I mean, how many, I mean guys, for all you guys have been watching this video, look how long I've been talking about NVIDIA. Okay, since, since it's, got, it's gone sideways, literally, since November, okay, we're or almost in January, it hasn't done anything. But again, you could see the light in the tunnel, the 50-day moving average, you could see it, 
just has to get over it, right? So I think going into 2021, you're going to hear a lot of opinions. Um, you're going to see a lot of people give their take of what they think is going to happen. You show me one expert, you show me one fund manager, you show me anybody with any type of worth of credibility that could have predicted, number one, we're going to be in the worst global pandemic since like the, the influenza, right? The Spanish flu, for God's sake, right? Measles, smallpox, I, I don't remember, right? And the market will be at all time highs. Okay, you show me that person, I will take every part of my possessions, liquidate them and give them, give them my money to manage. Okay, nobody knows, guys. Nobody knows. That's why, again, stop with the predictions. Stop trying to figure out how you're going to beat the market. Take it day by day. The one thing that's taught me, uh, and I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm like 21st year. The one thing that's taught me is, again, we're not smart. We're idiots. I'm the king of the idiots. I'm probably the dumbest human being on the planet when it comes to normal life. Again, I don't know how to change a tire. I never have, right? I've changed one light bulb. No, excuse me. I've, I've hung up one sconce about a year and a half ago, first time ever. And I had my, my wife helping me, my wife's cousin helping me via, via, via FaceTime. I was on YouTube, right? I had 28 people helping me to fix one sconce. So I'm an idiot in life. But again, through repetition and screen time and right and just over and over and over again, Again, the movie doesn't end a different way. So we want to make sure that we're just taking it trade by trade. You understand the macro picture. And again, if you look at the macro picture, you can see the market's very, very good. Uh, any, any, any way you look at it, the, the Russell, the Qs, uh, the spot, everything's good, right? Everything's good. But just remember, everything is good until it's not. So before you start liquidating everything you have and going long January 1st for a mega 2021 run, understand that nothing is given to us. Nothing is uh, going to be guaranteed. At any given point, the market can completely implode and you're looking at a completely different 2021 than you are 2020. So to avoid any type of, uh, any type uh, of possible exposure, just limit yourself, right? Limit yourself, limit your opinion, take it day by day, take it interval by interval, use data, use option order flow to kind of give your next opinion. And again, like I said, when we started the video, stay in business. So let's talk about uh, Friday's pivots. Uh, very aggressive action. Uh, market still looks very, very good. Uh, a lot of good order flow and a lot of names. Again, maybe there will be a lot of rotation going back into uh, technology, full strength technology, not one day at a time. We'll see. You know, we'll see. Again, we can't put the cart in front of the horse. But uh, let's talk about it. So, uh, Sono, a uh, really nice breakout on Friday, 23.80.24 uh, needs to build. Here is Sono. Uh, still looks higher. It looks really nice. I mean, again, not a huge move, but still looks higher. Took out the 23.80.24 level. Uh, close at 24.5. Uh, again, nice move. Still looks uh, a lot higher. Slower mover name. NVIDIA, still waiting, right? Still waiting. Uh, Disney needs to build, got rejected off that 175 level three times. Here is uh, Disney, right? So it took out the 75 level, not a big move, went to about 75.84. You had some good call buying for a little bit further away, but again, it got pulled down with kind of everything else, with the Dow and everything else. Again, not everything is Tesla, not everything is these SPAC names. Uh, when the Dow goes down 200 points, guess what? Dow stocks will get avoided. So again, uh, only about an 80 cent move on um, on uh, on Disney before everything got pulled in. Uh, FSOY continues to be strong, choppy little sucker. But again, we are still seeing uh, consistent order flow on FSOY. Uh, it broke out on Thursday off of that 101 level, uh, confirmed 103. So FSOY is doing kind of well. But again, this name you really want to be buying on dips into rising support. So here broke out on, on Thursday, 101. It took out 103, traded up to almost 106. A again, you want to buy the stock into rising support. Again, if you see here on the five-day moving average, you see that five-day bounce, five-day bounce, five-day bounce. So the next entry, you really want to see it somewhere around that 97 for the bulls to hold for continuation. Because again, if it's the longer it starts building above this channel, there's a lot of room assuming uh, the market continues to be uh, good. Uh, Amazon, Still waiting, right? Uh, DraftKings had a big pop, and then you had news come out of Ohio that they are not uh, passing the gambling bill, which doesn't make any sense. If, you're, if your state is, has been really affected uh, by COVID and you, you're lacking revenue, it doesn't make sense why you wouldn't 
acknowledge gambling and you know get tax benefits for your state. It just doesn't make sense. But again, uh, that's what uh, Ohio did at least initially say. So it took out 5550 and you know it took out 5550 and it traded right to uh, 56 and again it obviously it sold off on that news. Uh, Dropbox I still like didn't confirm. Uh, DDOG has been really really strong name. Uh, very, very strong name on DDOG. Um, so that 110 level, I still like. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't get there, but I, I still really like that 110 level. Really nice, little, tight little gap down. Uh, AMD's been a big runner. 190, uh, excuse me, 98 needs to build. Still, you can see this channel here. You see this whole channel here in 98. This is how tight this thing is. Never got there, but you know, set an alert on this thing, guys. 98 on on uh, AMD. Uh, should see that 100 level. We've been seeing a bunch of. 100 and, 100, 100 and 105 uh, January calls uh, being traded. Uh, ZS broke out on Thursday off that 190. Uh, off that 190 level, 195 needs to build. Here is ZS continued uh, its move. You can see here it just closed, uh, it went, went to 198. Should get the two, 200, 201 on Friday. So nice little move there as well. Uh, snow is a really big move out the gate. Uh, 339, 340 needs to build. Uh, it was a really aggressive channel. Uh, I caught a piece of this pivot here. Here was a 339. You can see the move right to 4748. And the reason why, you see this candle here? Uh, 338.69 was the five day supply. It took out that supply, 339, 340, and really put up a really good $7 candle. I got into it a little bit late, still took us some cash line. I know a lot, a lot of you guys did a lot better than I did on it. Uh, but a really nice move. You had a $7, $8 move very, very quickly. Uh, FSOI. JMII absolutely exploded. And here's my point, folks, um, kind of where we are on the new social media front. Technical analysis matters. I, I repeat this again. Technical analysis matters. But when you combine technical analysis and you get an influential social leverage, okay, personality like a Motley Fool or a Citron or anything, anything that has a monster following, you're going to get a move on steroids. And Motley Fool came out, they were positive on JMAI. This is the Amazon of Africa of all things. Again, I still don't understand why they just don't use Amazon. Okay. But anyway, 41 rejected two times. Motley Fool, how many you know readers do they have? God knows, right? 41 needs to build. This thing absolutely exploded, uh, went all the way up to 43.70. So you're telling me those bets that we saw a couple of days ago on the weekly 45 calls, they didn't know that Motley Fool was coming out with this recommendation? Just saying, right? Just saying. So anyway, great move on JMAI. Uh, really big move there as well. Uh, NET, I really like. So I caught this trade pretty nicely. Um, and it stopped right at 84.20. It, it, again, monster 90 call buyers. And unfortunately, I, I didn't check when I was when I was doing my um, when when I was doing my uh, my research. Um, I didn't check where the stock. I, I didn't look where the stock was after hours. This thing actually gapped up uh, almost two you know two and change. There's a lot of upside still left on this thing, but this thing does look like it wants to take out the 52 week highs again repeat 90 call buyers coming in for uh, next week. Uh, we saw the previous week 100s, 105s for January. So nice move there. Hopefully we, we could get a little bit more meat on this trade uh, for the next week. But again, good stuff going on. Uh, and that's it, right? And that's it. So, you know, look, I, I think, you know, I think you have to keep a, a bullish tone into this tape uh, going into the new week. Again, just don't anticipate trades. Just wait for them to play out. And again, folks, if you want to be uh, considered an old trader, okay, which is the greatest compliment that somebody can give you, if you want to be known as a, as a really old trader, make sure your trading style represents what you want to be. Boring, old, methodical, predictable. Right, guys? High probability. Guys, have a great weekend for all you guys who are not with us, I want to wish you guys once again, uh, Merry Christmas. Am I still allowed to say that? Are we still allowed to wish some each other Merry Christmas? Good Lord, man. Some of the people are so sensitive. <gasps> it's Happy Holidays, Dan. It's not Merry. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God, love. See you all next week.